Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today we're taking a look at a new release from a company that has made some interesting keyboards. And I've had the chance to review. This is a, a Proto Arc and Royal Axe um, collaboration. And this is a 75% with an OLED screen that I believe is fully um, programmable. This is the L75. Now, it, it ProtoArc is the one that has a website. I haven't found the Royal Axe website, but there may, may be one. So I don't know too much about the collaboration that they have. I do know that I have enjoyed, for the most part, the keyboards that they've put out in the past. So I'm very interested to see this one. I mean, from what I have seen, I've only seen a couple of pictures before they asked if I wanted to review this. Or before I reached out to them, I'd only seen a couple of pictures so I don't know too much about the keyboard, but that's how I like to do most of my reviews. I like to just dive into it and discover things as I go. So basically we have a 75% with an OLED display and hot swap. I believe this one comes, yes, with yellow switches. So let's go ahead, dive on in and see what we've got. So before we look at the keyboard proper, let's see what we have in the box. We have a user guide. On one side shows us the connections for Bluetooth 1, 2, and 3. Um, and it does have a 2.4 and it looks like it has a pocket for a 2.4 in the back. I do, I gotta say, I like their packaging. Um, I wish more electronic products in general were packed with such dense foam. It's light, but it's super dense. So it's gonna take a lot before any damage to the outside box is actually gonna affect the product inside. And we do have a user manual and it does look like the screen is customizable and we'll take a look at the software but i'm pretty sure it's going to be very similar to the software that i first saw in the key duos keyboards now we have some extra switches which is always appreciated when uh, having a pre-built keyboard because you never know you might take a switch out one switch might go bad anything can happen so having that extra switch is a godsend in many situations and they these are Gaineron. I don't know if these are the pro but I believe they are um, there is no ping to them so most likely these are the pro and they kind of appear that way to me from the semi frosted um, tops that they have now along with that we also have nicely labeled I gotta say I like Packaging is important, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, don't spend all your money on the packaging if we're about the product, but the better something that's packaged, the better the experience is, in my opinion. So in here, we see that we have a few extra keys in case we want to change, you know, give it a bit of our personality. It was always also very much appreciated when included by the manufacturers. So we've got a black or gray, white on gray escape key. And then arrow keys, enter key, and a space bar. And they appear to be almost like an SA profile. One of the SA profiles are pretty tall, like a sculpted OEM. Then we have a separate key switch puller and a key cap puller. On the other side of the box, we have what looks to be a USB cable, and it looks to be an aviator cable, if I'm not mistaken. Wow. So, it, not many keyboards come with cables, or aviator cables, I should say. I mean, they practically all come with just your standard USB cables, but I like coil cables. I'm not necessarily big on the aviator connectors. Um, if it's going to have a connector, I'd rather the Lemo, but I'd just rather no connector. I don't think there's, there's a need. And for those that might not know why these are called aviator connectors, these were originally designed as connectors for uh, pilots headgear for their microphone their headphones so that they could you know switch positions and not have to worry about um you know if there was turbulence or something their cable coming unplugged so they could plug it in screw it in place i mean it could come off their head obviously but it wasn't weren't going to have to fiddle you know 
in the middle of a, say, a storm you hit all of a sudden, you know, and you're getting an updraft and all of a sudden your headset gets disconnected from, you know, the tower that you were talking to. You didn't have to go underneath the console and try to, you know, plug it back in. So that's why these were invented, I, I should say, originally used for that I know of, and that's why they're called aviator cables. But um, it's always nice to see on a USB cable because, I mean, it's you ob obviously more more time, effort, and money were put into it, and a lot of people do appreciate it. They have what looks to be gold-plated points and nice metal covers, as well as um, these stress relief uh, bands that are put in or ends. They um, they help relieve stress that could over time going back and forth break the, the tiny four cables that are inside of there, or tiny four wires, I should say. So it's always nice to see things like this. So let's go ahead and put this back in the box and get to the star of the show. I don't know. I, I think that this just adds you know a little bit better protection, but it does come. The keyboard comes in a bag that includes a dust cover, and I think all of their keyboards to date that I reviewed have included a dust cover. And then the keyboard itself comes in its own little bag. And here we are with the Proto Arc. Royal X L75, and I've got to say, it's it's impressive. Um, it is a, um, I would guess, polycarbonate. Or it could be ABS. Um, it does have the pocket for the USB-C. All of the, uh, and this is a metal badge? It feels like it might be metal. It could be electroplated plastic, but it looks like metal. All of the, the uh, pieces like this come protected the screen comes protected I don't usually take this off until I actually measure and cut um, a film screen protector from a cell phone and put it on there because usually these displays are just plastic and they could get scratched easy um, though there was one I can't think of which keyboard that actually had a glass display but obviously glass can get scratched as well just not as easy so we have this really cool interesting design um, I see the escape key. Yeah, that's red. The extra key. So we got we could add a little bit more color, match it up with the escape, or just blend it in to the keycap color. This is a um, uh, 3277, I believe, colorway uh, to match up with the IBM 3277 terminal, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I do have the MT3 set. Now these... Hmm. Uh, they look like, if I had to guess, there's some variant of SA because they have almost the height of an SA keycap, uh, but they have that sculpt to them. So, ooh. and it sounds quite nice. It has substance. I like that it has a pocket. It feels like it is magnetic, though I don't like that it protrudes that much out. Um, granted, you're not going to be moving your keyboard around, but that's like likely to get snagged on something if you're putting it in a bag or um, even on a cable. Let's go ahead. All right. Oh, yeah. There's the USB-C port. And if we turn it on, what do we get? All right. Looks like a pretty quick boot up with the RGBs. And um, this probably means to go ahead and plug it in. I'm going to have to mess with that to see. Okay, that's doing that. Looks like it's in English by default. So we do have the exchange, the changing of the colors here. Is that language? Oh, I guess we're gonna have to go. Oh. All right. Being that it's uh, just on battery, it's probably just being a bit of a, because um, it's not connected, so it's trying to save battery power. On the side here, we have Bluetooth, USB, and 2.4 gigahertz connection switch. So, all right, so there we can kind of get a, a view. Bluetooth one, all right, then it switched. All right, so it's it's basically going into power saving. We'll plug it up here in a minute. I want to take a look at everything else first, so let me go ahead and just turn it off. 
I like that it has a separate on and off switch as well as a mode switch. Another thing I wanted to take a look at real quick. Yeah, it does have a nice um, front panel display and that does have a piece of plastic over it. So, yep. We can pull it off and get a good clear look at that. I, I gotta say, I do like that effect. I know. I, I'm a sucker for RGB and in certain situations, not like I have to have it, but when it's done nicely like this. Um, and though Proto Arc Royal X seems to be more geared towards a work environment, this one has definitely got a bit of a game tinge to it. You have slain an enemy. So it has that. So I think this is going to appeal, uh, to, to many, um, it would have kind of been cool if they included the side lights, but the design I don't think would let forward, especially for the Switch. I still do like that kind of grip that it has on the side. All right, so let's turn it off and see what we've got. Let's check out the stabilizers. All right, take out. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a Gateron Pro. And I think those are the switches you get options for. Now, oh, I am surprised. This is a, does not have an IXPE foam sheet above the PCB. Hmm, that's almost an expected uh, <laughs> piece nowadays. I'm, as good as it sounded, I kind of expected it to have it. As far as stabilizers go, we've got some that are... They are <laughs> lubricated. Uh, we cannot fault them for lubricating, but they did not feel mushy to me. We seem to have a little bit of extra that got onto the plate. And the plate does look to be polycarbonate. And I can feel a dense, dense layer of what I would assume is uh, silicone rubber between the plate and the PCB. Let me stick these back on there and see how tight they are. Oh, they're quite well attached. So they've got good tolerances. And that's probably why it didn't feel too mushy. Uh, I like the, uh, I didn't have to even force that switch in there. It's just enough that I couldn't pull it out with my fingers, but enough space that it just slid right in. And I could use a bit of tuning, but it's really not bad for stock stabs on a PC plate. So with these um, Gatoron Yellows, uh, we do have a bit of a more muted sound profile, but it is on the deeper end. I would even say that its sound signature could be considered Thaki. So a stock Thaki keyboard, not bad. And then with a keycap set that I don't want to get rid of, I like it. Now, granted, I am a fan of taller keycap sets, SA, MT3, even so, some OEM sets. I'm just, I'm a kid of the 80s. And I mean, my first computer at home was a uh, VIC-20 and a Commodore 64. And they had nice, I mean, very similar to SA keycap. So I'm very accustomed to them. I can use Cherry, I can use XDA, but if I have my choice, I prefer SA or those similar, the KSA, the MSA, the CSA. Anything that has SA in the profile name usually comes close to that. They, they usually just have slightly different heights or different sculpts, but I'll have to take a look for this one to see exactly what they call this one so we do have the programmable screen i'll have to plug this in and take a look at the software but other than that we have a very interesting nicely designed keyboard like i said this would be my only gripe but it i do know from the other royal axe keyboards i have it hangs on to it quite well and it's deep in there so it would take some force to actually pull it out of there or damage it I just wish that it was a little bit more flush with the case, that's all. So flipping it over, we see that we have the badge, and actually those are the G Pro yellows. And it's kind of interesting that they actually put it on the on bottom badge. We do have two pairs of flip-up feet for three different type angles. 
and they all do have the rubber feet on them so we don't have to worry about it sliding around and the keycaps also have their um the sub legends on the uh, side side printed front legends that you can see the uh, different effects a lot of times especially when they're shined through keycaps i'm one of the first things i'm thinking is what keycap set am i going to replace them with this is a keyboard one of the few that i'm going to say i'll stick with the keycap set that it comes with because not only does it match but it's a nice keycap set and plus it has the functions for this keyboard as sub legends and this one even appears to have not only a Mac and a Windows mode, but also an iOS mode, which has become quite popular. A lot of people use their iPads for many different things. So having a specific iOS um, shortcut there is a nice addition. So as we can see with the keycaps, they are a nicely double shot keycap. It feels quite nice. I would guess it's PBT, but I'm not quite sure. I will have to look it up and put it in the technical section. Now let's see what kind of uh, width we have here. Oh, this is a 1.5, it looks like. Yep, 1.5 millimeter thickness body. For an OEM keycap set, that is a very, very nice width. So I've got to say, I, as far as I know, uh, Royal Axe and Proto Arc are fairly new to the game. I mean, I think they had some membrane keyboards before, but as far as mechanical keyboards, but I must say that every keyboard I've taken a look at from them has significantly increased in um, quality uh, as well as craftsmanship and attention to details that I think would be important to a keyboard enthusiast as well as someone that's a gamer looking for a mechanical keyboard so i like this they're doing hey you can game or you can work whatever you choose to do it's going to be there for you you've got you know your personalization with the oled oled screen um, you've got wireless you've got different operating systems in case you know you play on your windows machine but you work on your mac machine uh, it's got, it is a keyboard meant to satiate the needs of those that, you know, want a good sounding keyboard. And I mean, for a lot of people, this is going to be it out of the gate. They're going to be fine pulling out this keyboard and getting to work with it. They're not, they're not going to, a lot of people won't even think about what mod my keyboard. That sounds great because this is. It's not going to interrupt an office environment. It's not loud. And it's... The sound consistency is good. So, I mean... I mean yeah, it's got a gasket mount on it. And you can... It's got flex, but it's not the craziest amount of flex. But just enough to where you're going to have a softer typing experience. going to have more uniformity going up and down. Now I got to say, I mean, this keyboard, I, I'm, I am going to go ahead and add it to my daily driver list because I like it. The only thing I don't like is this, but I'm going to assume that I'm going to be able to change that when it comes to uh, pulling up the software. Um, I, uh, I do believe their last software that, yeah, it does allow key mapping. I don't remember if it has functions, but I'll have to take a look. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Royal Axe ProtoArc L75, a 75% three mode pre-built with a customizable 1.4 inch TFT screen. It comes preloaded with yellow Gateron G Pro switches and does have both Windows and Mac software or drivers available for download. It is preloaded with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. It comes with a gasket mounted PC plate that is also well dampened and weighs in at 937 grams. 
It is also loaded with double shot PBT keycaps with a 1.5 millimeter thickness that are similar in height to the OEM but have a sculpt that's similar to an SA or ASA profile. The chin of this keyboard sits at 18 and a half millimeters off the typing surface while the back sits at 26 and a half millimeters providing for a default typing angle of six degrees. Raising the middle set of feet will raise the back up to 35 and a half millimeters, giving you a nine degree typing angle. Using the final set of flip out feet will take the back to 45 millimeters and change your angle of typing to 13 degrees. The MSRP for this keyboard is $109.99. So I did take a look at the software. I So I went ahead and changed the animation in the software to Nyan Cat. Now this particular GIF is uh, 240 by 120, I no, 240 by 160. So I haven't tried any bigger resolution ones. I, I, I have to restore a folder that I had a whole bunch of animated GIFs for uh, keyboards. But the software actually, I, I think that they're it all seems to, every keyboard that I've played with thus far anyway, that has a customizable OLED, OLED or TFT screen like this one does, appears to have um, the same, you know, library or it's using the same base software. And every time I've seen it, they, they seem to be improving a little bit more. Now here we have function control to go back to the um, screen and it does have functionality in the software where you can set the time from your computer. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anything um, to choose between 12 or 24 hour display. So that's the default. Um, I prefer it that way, but I know in the United States, it's gotta be AM, PM for most people. Anyway, um, so the software allows you to do key sensitivity, which I didn't really, I tried to see if I could between one, five, and 10, like press the key any wider, but it's not gonna actuate until the actual leaf spring does its thing. So I wasn't able to test, but it may do something in gaming. Um, it also has the ability to set your timeouts for the lights if you're in Bluetooth or 2.4 gigahertz mode, which I think is a nice feature. And um, it does allow you to have uh, function layers. Um, Obviously, the ones that are already mapped out are, are not available, but you can, um, any of the other ones you can map out. It has a pretty good amount of functionality, and I found it surprising that it had Windows and Mac uh, versions. Most, not all, I know there's a few out there, um, but if it's not a, a VIA or a QMK keyboard, 90% of the time I would say you only have a Windows driver. Uh, I'm on Linux, so I I never get a driver <laughs> unless it's a VIA or QMK keyboard, which I prefer. But I've learned to kind of just accept that, you know, Linux still hasn't, you know, it hasn't yet been the year of the Linux desktop. So um, I don't know if we'll ever get that, but it's in, in my opinion, that's why I prefer VIA and QMK. That said... I really like this pre-built. Um, Pre-builds have been getting so much better over the last few years, and uh, they continue to, I think I've said this before, but whereas when I first started doing this, I preferred kits because the majority of pre-builds I came across just did not sound or feel good stock. It's like, okay, I have to mod this before I'm going to use it. And that's kind of flipped. Now it's like 10% of the kits are like, oh, this doesn't sound good stock. A good 90% of the pre boats that I've seen um, or that I've been reviewing lately are just sounding so good out of the box that I think a lot of people are just going to be, that's yeah, good enough for me. This would work in any office. I, I can't, even if you were in cubicles, I can't see anybody complaining about this sound and we're not dealing with silent switches these are g pro yellows um yes you could add p foam in there you could add the pet mod and that would definitely increase the volume and add a little bit more pop and more cream but i think that 
this has a Saki sound profile. I don't know what profile the keycaps are. Um, to me, they're they're a very like a like a scooped or sculpted OEM, and they remind me a lot of SA or ASA variants. But now I've seen this keyboard from I, I, I'm guessing because it's uh it's currently the Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Now, you know, instead of it being a weekend, it's just the whole month of November. So I've seen this as low as $89.99, but the MSRP seems to be $109.99. Um, yes, it's not a aluminum keyboard, but it has a lot of features. Now, <laughs> this was QMK Bia. <laughs> I'd, I'd gladly pay a little bit more for it, <laughs> honestly. Um, I would love to see companies provide the option for QMK Maya. Like, you know, here you could use our software that, you know, here's the software, just Windows or Windows and Mac. Or you can choose to load up our QMK version of it because most of these MCUs are going to be able to handle. Um, I don't know if they're compatible, mind you, but they all seem to have, I mean, they have per key RGB. So I think that they have more than enough memory to handle um, QMK, but they might have to give up some private blobs, and that's probably why a lot of this isn't really moving. But if they have the option to say, hey, you can load up QMK via, um, granted, it'd be preferable that you could say, hey, you could switch back and forth, but some of them may say, hey, once you load up QMK via, that's it, you can't go back to the private version private software that's fine I don't care about the closed source software if I can choose to go ahead and just use via or vile or you know heck, just QMK I mean if it's QMK it's easy to come up with a via key map file so that you can you know configure the most basic of options in via too so they're coming out of the gate ready to go no one doesn't have to be like all right this is a nice looking keyboard but I'm gonna have to do a B C before it's going to sound and feel to where I like it. No, this is, especially if you're in an office, <laughs> this is going to be it. And then, I mean, you got your personalization, but hey, I want to see where my battery's at. I just want to see what mode I'm in. So, you know, we can go iOS mode, Windows mode, Mac mode. I was trying to link, but we can see we have 88% battery. We have the date, we have the time, we have the mode. So probably wants me to connect before it switches over to the um, the animation but I've got to say they just uh, they this is a nice keyboard another thing that I found um, quite interesting the uh, chin of this keyboard sits quite low um, every once in a while people ask for you know the chin to be low and this is 18.5 for not for being a non low profile um, keyboard it has quite a low chin so I'm a uh, I'm impressed but I I am going to come back to this keyboard because I do want to make it louder and poppier and see what a pet mod and a PE foam mod does this, uh, maybe even a Tempest tape mod, and we'll take a look at how it's built on the inside. Um, but, but like I said, I think this keyboard is great stock. So um, I hope that you guys enjoyed the review. If you have any questions for them, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the Royal Axe Proto Arc. L75, 75%, three mode with a customizable 1.4 TFT screen. TFT screen. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keep on.